Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to take a look at two different asset packs. I usually do one asset pack per video, but neither one of these really merits a full video in and of itself. So let's look at first by FUBU Studios, the mini sci-fi house interior pack, and then we'll separately look at Pandazoli's home interior little poly pack. So they both have this theme of being interior objects for housing such as um, beds and chairs and lamps and things like that one is more futuristic and then one other is more general so let's start with fubu and i believe individually these are both sitting at 15 that's one five fifteen dollars usd and as i've mentioned before if they're not on sale you still might be able to get a discount on them some youtube creators have um creator codes that they share, and so you might actually be able to get this slightly uh, less than that. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look first at Mini Sci-Fi House Interior Pack by FUBU Studios. So what they've done here, as typical, they give you both the individual prefabs, so this is really what you're getting. And then what they did is they created a demo scene that includes, I presume, all of the prefabs to see how they look in an environment. The only modification I made to this scene is I added post-processing. You basically can do that to any pack if you want. So it's just adding a bloom effect or when you localize it, that's how you make a single object glow. So here are the individual prefabs. And so what we'll do is we'll zoom in on the scene in just a minute here. And you can see you've got 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90, looks like just over 100 objects. And we'll just click on a couple of these individually, and then we'll look at the scene. So like, for instance, that's a wall. So you could actually use that in a non-residential. That looks like that could actually work in like a uh, industrial environment. That one could as well. And again, they do say that this is a sci-fi theme. And you can see there's actually like a nice sheen to that. Got some wall decorations, got some windows. So again, this definitely does not look residential. I could actually picture this being in more like, um, like a space station environment. Uh, but then you have obviously more residential stuff. You've got trash, tool bags, more high-tech thermometer, Television, although the aspect ratio is more like an old school television rather than what's used now. And like a computer station. Shower cabin, potted plants, lamps. little table and one of the one of the intentions when I purchased this I've got a barrel here is that I had previously purchased a package by mesh tint it's like a sci-fi environment and so my thought was to combine this with that one because I thought there was a few gaps in that package and as I mentioned previously I wasn't able to uh, come to an agreement with them about them adding anything which is again fine they, they they you know have plenty of other work to do um but yeah so the idea was i wanted to mix and match these packages together because they have a similar sci-fi low poly aesthetic to them i've yet to get around to that but i figured i'd at least let you guys see this package and that way you guys could make a decision for yourself if this is something you were interested in and we'll just click on a couple more so you got the bed another bedroom computer and again not quite sure why they chose that aspect ratio not to nitpick but we have long since gone into was it the 16 by 9 aspect ratio you know like for hd tvs okay so if we back up and we go into their demo scene they made these like little kind of like isometric approach because you have one wall and one floor and if you rotate around, there is not another 
wall. So it's basically as if you were using this in isometric environment. You don't have to. This is just how they chose to demonstrate it. And like I said, the only thing that I've added to this is I did add post processing and there's plenty of tutorials about how to do that. So that's why the screens have a nice glow to them. And each one of these seems to have a theme like this is kind of like a garage it looks like. This one looks to be more of a maybe recreation. There's you got like the headphones you have not necessarily, but it could be a gamer's chair. And you got a little robot here. You got some cables. Uh, this says that it's meant to be just technology room cabin. Not sure what that's supposed to be. There's a door on the front with a handle. So not quite sure what that is supposed to be. I was thinking like a server or something, but whatever. And again, it has this kind of almost like Tron-like aesthetic where you have all these kind of superfluous glow around absolutely everything, but it gives it a nice futuristic aesthetic. We have this room over here. So again, this looks like this is meant to be more like a kitchen, I'd say. It looks like you've got a stove, you've got a dishwasher. Uh, you've got a fuse box. And because of some of these things appear kind of, uh, I don't want to say non-specific, but they look technology in general that you probably could mix and match them for other things. Like this probably could get away with not being a dishwasher. You could make this be, you could like stack these up and they look like, you know, computer terminals or something. Obviously not like a PC, but like a server rack or something like that. And then here you have what was meant to be a bedroom. So you've got a bed. Again, you got some decorations that looks like it's meant to be like a Dyson fan where there's like no blade, at least visible. Computer desk. Again, you've got something over here. It says cabinet two, although that definitely looks to be more um, like it's meant to be computer technology. To me, a cabinet is something you store things in. To me, that definitely has more like a um, um, more of a, a computer hardware look to it. This looks like this is an AC. Yep, air conditioning. I'm just looking at the name up there. And then here it looks like this is meant to be the bathroom. Got some towels. You've got a shower cabinet. And you've got bathroom cabinet too. So actually, it looks like okay. So you got a hand dryer, it's soap dispenser there, bathroom cabinet at the bottom. Oh, that's supposed to be a mirror at the top. Okay. So I guess that's even though it says mirror, I, a lot of times you have a com combination mirror and medicine chest. So I'm thinking that's why it's. A cabinet like that as well so is that all the rooms we got one more here again this looks like it's meant to be kind of an entertainment room I believe it says that's yeah living living room cabinet so you've got a place for people to sit okay so I think I looked at all the rooms and again you don't have to combine them like this this is just apparently what they had in mind when they were designing the individual uh, objects that they were thinking of the different rooms in the house. Okay, so uh, let's go on to the other package because um, nothing really to report on this one as far as there's no glitches that I'm aware of. I couldn't find any missing textures. Um, so again, $15 USD, decide for yourself if you feel it's worth it. Uh, I do think that it can be integrated with other packages because it has a similar low poly, but not like super low poly look to it. And everything has kind of a sci-fi futuristic feel. Okay, so let's go over to the other package now. And we're back. And as I mentioned, this one is Home Interior Low Poly Pack by Pandazoli or Pandazol. Not quite sure how to pronounce it. It's a fairly new package as of the time of this recording, and it's fairly small. It won't add much uh, size to a, uh, a game or an application, even for you to use all of the objects. And let's go ahead and take a look at what they give you. So again, you are going to mainly work from the prefab folder. You're going to be instantiating from here in whatever application you're working on. 
this one also has a demo that you would not use in your game, but it gives you a nice layout of everything that you get. We'll just briefly go through this, and then I'll show you an implementation example of how you could do like interior decorating uh, uh, functionality within a game. So you think of like Sims or House Flipper or something like that. So since you can't move the camera around when it's playing, I'm just going to manually scroll through here. So as you can see, chosen toys, plushies, sports equipment, stuff for desk clock, stuff for a bathroom, trash bins, faucets, pillows, throw rugs, lots of chairs, all kinds of chairs, bubbler, and we've got washer dryer, looks like a sound bar. TV looks like routers, maybe an Xbox, PlayStation, a little chest, again more cheers. And I do want to call out that unlike some packages, they didn't just do a palette swap. You can see this and this, the mesh is different, the geometry is different. They actually redrew these. Like some have a, a graving here, some have that so they actually went out of their way to try to make these look distinct so even though they're low poly they do each look distinctive lots of beds uh foot rests so you've got bunk bed single double even like a bed roll here a couple cribs tables you've got lots of cabinets more tables so like i said when i was looking at this package what really came to mind was like a home interior uh, decorating game. So again, an element of The Sims or House Flipper or something like that. You don't have to. You could just, if you're just making your houses from scratch, you could use these. But it just, because they broke it up so nice and simple like this, that I was thinking that uh, this would be a good example for like a home decorating game. And I already worked out an example that we'll look at in just a minute. And so we got like a fireplace, more shelving, and then like separators and tiles, probably mainly for like a bathroom. Okay, so if we go to the scene I made, what I did, I used a default plane, but I shrunk it to 0.2 to 0.2. Why? Because by default, a plane is 10 unity units by 10 unity units. So by doing 0 0.2, it's now 2 unity units by 2 unity units, and that actually worked out pretty well for the default size of the objects in this second package. If you looked at my, um, my voxel framework project, you're going to see that this is very similar how it works, that you have a plane with a collider on it. So you've got a mesh collider here. You have a script with an array, and the array links out to the individual prefabs, and then you just have a simple uh, a routine that says on mouse down, instantiate whatever object has been selected. So let's take a look at that script. So every plane, as I said, has a collider and a script. That's all it takes to create an array. So you're saying it's public, which will make it accessible in the inspector. You say what kind of object it is. I'm doing transform. You could do a game object. You need to put in the square brackets. That's really what tells Unity that it's an array is by putting the square brackets and then the arbitrary name of the variable. In other words, what do you want to call it? It's house objects. So I call it house OBJ. That's it. That creates your array. And then you simply have to say how many positions there are in the array and then you just start dragging and dropping the uh, objects there again this script is attached to each of the tiles the planes and then this is it just private void on mouse down so what this is saying is the script the object the script is attached to when that object is has an house on mouse down event instantiate what are we going to instantiate as always three arguments what is being instantiated so there we go house obj that's this because it is an array we have to say what position it is because again the whole idea of an array is that it can store multiple values so this is element zero this is element one this is element two i usually refer it to as position but you know if we want to use the uni verbiage so you have to say in the square brackets 
which position it is. Well, this is a variable, which I'll show you why in just a minute. So the first argument is what is going to be instantiated, where it's going to be instantiated. Transform.position is the position of the object the script is attached to. Well, this script is attached to the title tile, so it's saying put it on that tile. And then we're just saying use the default rotation of that same object. So this and this are identical. So we're saying use its own rotation. Now, obviously, in a full house decorating game, you'd probably put in functionality that lets you uh, in real time change the rotation. That's beyond the scope of this demo. This is just meant to the basics. So as you can see, really, really clean code. In fact, you don't even need this. I was just thinking of grabbing the um, location for additional controls, but effectively, you've got two lines of code. You're creating the array, and in the on mouse down, you're saying to place it there. So three lines of code if you want to include that. So incredibly simple, incredibly easy, incredibly clean. Tried and true method. Okay, so that should about do it. Oh yeah, let's look at the other script. So I created a GM object and I have the other script. And all this other script is, is to toggle between which object. Remember I said that a variable was saying which position. So I'm just saying if you click on the number one key, use the object in the zero position. Two, use the object in the first position. Three, use the object in the second position. In your game, you would not want to do this. This is just to show you the, the basic functionality because if you've got, I believe this package has 377 objects, clearly you don't want the player to have to use 377 different keys. This is just to show you the, the functionality. You would actually come up with a UI that lets you like uh, visually scroll through the different objects. Okay, so with basically six line of codes, what can we do? We're gonna click on number one to select that object and we click on a tile, boom, that easy. Click on number two, you got that one. Click on number three, that one. Oop, did I mess up? Three, two. Oh, I didn't click on two the first time. I must click on three, sorry. And just like that. So you already have the core of interior decorating with like six lines of code. So it's really sometimes very, very easy to use. So between purchasing the assets from the Unity store and using a tried and true method, you can have the beginning of an interior decorating game up and running that quickly. Obviously, there's certain things that this does not have. For instance, there's no control to prevent you from putting two in the same place. So, you know, you would need to put a control there. And right now, there's no way to rotate. So, but again, as far as the basics, that gets you up and running. So, I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave that in the comment field. Uh, if there's anything else you'd like to see, put that in the comment field. And please do enjoy the rest of your day.